Hello and welcome back to MetaMath. In this video, I will cover how to prepare and ultimately do well in introductory math competitions. Like with sports, training is really important, but it's up to you how you decide to go about it. I will highlight some key tips and points that I feel are helpful. So firstly, with the style of the test, the AMC8 is a 40 minute, 25 question test, which means on average, you only have 1.6 minutes per question. For math counts, it's pretty similar, and you only have 1.3 minutes per question on the sprint round. The target and team round have more time per question, but they do compensate by increasing the difficulty level of the problems. Speed is crucial to both of these competitions, but if you really want to stand out, you have to be able to crack the harder problems without sacrificing your speed. The four major components to doing well in any math competition are speed, problem solving ability, accuracy, and knowledge. While these competitions, specifically the AMC8 and Math Counts, are geared for speed, training all of these components is important. If you are incredibly fast at solving problems, but you have a high rate of error, then it almost cancels out. So you don't want to forget to train any of these abilities or ignore any aspects. So to stand out on a competition, you have to be solid across all four of these components. When it comes to actually preparing, there's no hard and fast rules, however, you can develop a plan how you'd like, but there are a few things to know when it comes to doing that. Doing problems is the best way to improve and prepare yourself for the competition. As you do more problems, you develop an intuition and you gain experience with new problems and specific types of problems as you encounter them. When you're in doubt, doing problems is the best thing to do, but make sure you keep a variety in the problems you do. Overloading on a specific subject doesn't make you remember it that much better, and you'll quickly lose the information instead if you were to just keep a variety. The beauty of math is that everything is connected. So number theory influences algebra, which influences geometry, and all of it goes together. So if you really wanna develop a solid intuition, make sure to keep doing a variety of problems. It's also important to do problems that are above your own difficulty level. There's no point really doing easy problems except maybe for accuracy or speed, but to really improve your problem solving ability and your knowledge, you have to do harder problems that challenge you but aren't outright impossible. So if you're really, if you have to spend time to think about a problem, that's the type of problems you wanna do. You don't wanna just be able to look at a problem right away, solve it quickly and then move on. Doing problems above your difficulty level is how you get better. The other way you want to prepare is taking practice tests. So you want to simulate test conditions. Um, this not only gives you a way to measure your progress, but it allows you to determine what your possible score could be. So you want to simulate a real test condition. So take it in a quiet room, no cheating, or looking at solutions until the test is over. And you want to make sure that you follow through with the time test um, and lastly, reviewing problems is as important, if not more, than doing problems. Obviously, if you get a problem right, you understand it, but it also does help to read the solution in case you can discover a more elegant or faster approach. So reviewing problems after you do them is another important thing you always have to do. A big time waste people make when it comes to reviewing problems is they don't know when to give up. You have to know when to give up, and I'm not saying just give up when you can't do a problem. You should always make a serious attempt to solve the problem, but at the same time, don't waste 30 minutes trying to solve one problem because you feel frustrated. Finding a solution after you've attempted a problem is the best thing to do. So once you find a solution, try to understand what you did right and wrong. If the solution made sense, really introspect and figure out why you got it wrong in the first place. You could ask yourself, what did I learn? What did the solution do or demonstrate that I didn't? And what are the key takeaways from this problem? Whether it be the fact that you made a careless mistake or the solution was elegant, don't simply read the solution and move on. Make a concentrated attempt to understand the solution. But if the solution doesn't make sense, then try to figure out why it doesn't. 
if there's a particular theorem or set of formulas that could be used to solve this problem, it might be worthwhile to investigate and apply those in this problem. But if the solution is just too complex and you really don't understand it, then odds are that problem is above your difficulty level and you should just move on. After analyzing a problem, you should start to develop intuition and plan for avoiding making those mistakes again. So what I would recommend is after you do a problem, make sure you come back to it after a few weeks. So you can create a list of problems that you've gotten wrong and after a while just come back and make sure that you're actually learning from your mistakes here. Preparation for the AMC and the math counts are mutually beneficial in the sense that for the most part, they help each other. But there are some differences that make training different. And firstly, the AMC 8 is a multiple choice test, which means you can rely on answer choices to check your work and also do process of elimination in the real test. But over relying on these answer choices is dangerous and you should be able to solve most problems without their answer choices. Obviously, you want to utilize the answer choice during a real test or practice test, but afterwards, if you only solve the problem because of the answer choices, you should go back and try to solve it without, because otherwise you're really cheating yourself of understanding the problem. For math counts, there are no answer choices, so you have to be able to come up with your own answer accurately. The sprint round is good for developing speed and accuracy, while the target round and team round are good for developing problem solving ability. Taking team rounds individually is beneficial and a really neglected aspect of the competition. So it's a good practice for not only developing problem solving ability, but for the actual team round. If you want to qualify for a certain level, say state, you want to do problems above that level. So if you want to qualify for chapter, do state level problems so that way you'll not only be prepared for the chapter, but you'll also be prepared for states when it comes time. And I've attached a list of resources that I feel are really helpful. The website artofproblemsolving.com is probably the most valuable resource you'll ever encounter in your math career. Math Counts Trainer, Alchemist, For the Win, and the online forum are all available for you once you make an account. The online forum is especially great when you don't understand a solution or a problem and you want to find a discussion on it. When it comes to books, I personally use and I would recommend the AOPS Volume 1 book as well as the Competition Math for Middle School book. They have a ton of problems and they really cover the types of problems you'd expect to see on the test. If you want to study topics, then the introductory series um, by AOPS is also helpful but it's not that important. Because probability and counting and number theory are rarely taught, I would recommend these books for topics. I've put links to all the online resources I've mentioned, and I hope this video really helped you. Thank you for watching, and if you found this video helpful, please subscribe and like this video.